Okay, we're going to talk about doing a pattern matching analysis in RBMine. And so um, we've talked about entering sites and generating templates. So I'll start from templates here and um, adding recordings as well. We'll add recordings um, once you get sites. So to run a pattern matching analysis, you need to first have a playlist of sounds. And this project already has playlists. If you don't yet have a playlist, you generate one from your recording. So you go into your recordings and you can select recordings or you can select all of your recordings and put some filters to say that I want to search for this certain sound in some subset of your recordings. Um, and you can select, end up selecting all of your recordings, but let's just say we want all of the recordings from um, this site, Styring A, from the site that I recorded at. And you select Save to Playlist. And when you do that, it'll ask you for your playlist name. You can name it. And for our playlist, um, we'll, we'll make playlists for each site, which will have your last name. And I'll just call this two. Okay, so when I go into playlists, I'll see, oh, there's Styring A2. Okay, and so I can use that playlist as one of the, what I, where I'm gonna search for a template. So we have templates, we have playlists. Now let's do a pattern matching analysis. So if you go up to this upper menu here and select analysis, you'll see there's three types. And the first type is pattern matching. And pattern matching is simply, you're, you're providing the program with a sound and a, a, an example of a sound, and that is the pattern that then is gonna be searched for in other recordings. And so we're gonna select pattern matching, and um, we're going to at, do a, create a new pattern matching analysis. And the way we're gonna name these analyses, so each person's gonna do one to three analyses, or maybe even more if you're doing a bunch of analyses. And the way we're going to identify them is by participants in the project. And so it's going to be the participants, last name, first initial, and then the name of the species you're searching for. And you might say spotted tohi song or spotted tohi call because you might be using different vocalizations. Okay, and so let's search for a template. And so we already have some templates in this project. This is a template that was generated on a other, another video. So I'll, I'll use that one. And then you can select your playlist. And um, then there's some options here. Um, it asks for how many matches do you want per recording? Some recordings may have lots and lots of sounds of that pattern in it. Um, when you're just doing a presence absence, you want to know if the bird is there or not. One match per recording is good, and so we're going to keep it at that. Um, we're not going to do anything with matches per site, but then there's the threshold, which is a correlation value that ranges from zero to one. And so what that means is how well do you want RBMont to match those sounds? Um, one would be that you're asking for RBMon to only match a perfect match to that sound, which is nearly impossible. So you have to something less than one, but something um, closer to zero would be any, anything, anything at all would be zero correlation. And so um, a good general starting point threshold might be 0.3. You don't wanna be listening to just anything. If you, if you match almost anything to that pattern, you may end up with thousands of sounds you have to listen to and say yes or no, it's that sound. So I usually start with a threshold of about 0.3. And then you select create. And as that um, job is happening, as that analysis is happening, you can actually look to see um, what's happening with it in jobs. And sometimes you have to refresh the page. And here we go, the job is um, working. It's, this is, it's searching through these recordings. It's looking for that pattern to be matched. And once it finishes, it's now completed. We can go back to analysis. And here we are. This is our analysis. Um, and we want to show details. So this is the template we used. And then this is the, some information about the analysis, how many recordings were searched, what the threshold was. And we got 74 matches. 
and there's not any that are listed as present or not present or un, they're, they're all unvalidated right now. So the final step in a pattern matching analysis is to listen to the sounds and to tell the program yes or no, it is that sound. So this is a part of the process that everybody's going to go through as well. And it's a great way to learn your sounds. So here is the template. And then here is my sound. That's a really good match. And when you actually hover over these sounds, it will tell you what the score is. So this is a 0.99 similarity to the, the template. This one's 0.75. And as you move through these recordings, the math, the match ability or the match correlation value gets lower and lower. But this one's a great match. So I, I select that recording and I say it's present in this recording. Same with this one. That one's uh, also a spotted tohi, so I'm going to select that as present. Um, as you go through these recordings, the match values get lower and lower. This is a score of 0.3. I can't even hear that one, um, but let's play this one. Okay, I hear something here. And so sometimes what you're gonna have to do is go into the visualizer and see what selection that is. And sometimes that gets you a better idea if that's the real sound or not. And so I'm gonna play the recording. And it really, there isn't, a sound of a tohi in that selection. And so when I go back to that one, I'm gonna tell the program that it was not a match, okay? And so you can select and you can say not present, okay? And so let me just double check to make sure that's the right sound here. Yes, that's the one and so I'm going back and I'm saying, not present. And then you hit submit. You have to hit submit. That's right for these values to be counted. So let's do this again for these. These are both present. And then I'm going to select submit. That's how you do your validations. So you would go through all of your recordings. Now, um, sometimes you'll have a correlation value and you get too many matches. 74 matches is fine. Once you get over, you know, 150 or so matches, you, it may be time to up your correlation value for your analysis. So you could rerun this analysis with say a correlation value of 0.5. Um, and so if we go back in and do that, you could do a new analysis and do the correlation value of 0.5 and you might get fewer. Um, it's a good idea to get at least say 20 matches just to listen to them and to make sure you got some of them that actually are, are the species you're looking for. Now, if you really are new to bird sound ID, um, you, you may need to use some resources and listen to a lot of recordings of birds, even though you're using a really specific template, getting to know the types of sounds these birds can make really helps you to be, get better and better at saying yes or no, it is that bird. And so some of those resources are Xenocanto. So Xenocanto is a site where recordists will share their sounds and they'll help each other with identifications and validations and things like this. And um, there's a great um, collection of bird sounds. You can type any bird in the world and there's recordings for many of the birds in the world and in some cases thousands or, or at least hundreds of recordings of the, that bird. Another great resource is the Macaulay Library through Cornell and that library provides images and videos as well as recordings for, for birds and you can just go and listen to them. I recommend um, listening to recordings of birds from a nearby area to where your sites are. But that is pattern matching analysis and it's a great tool and it's going to be a lot of fun learning to use it.